welcome to DataViz. We're going to replace an app settings.json setting with a user secret. For instance, a password or an IP address or something that's very sensitive to your organization that you don't want to have in source control. To keep it out of Git, but still have it available based on whichever workstation or server that the application is running from. So, yes, instead of app settings.json or in addition to, you will have a secrets.json, but it will not be here in the project and it will not be in source control. In fact, depending on the type of computer that you're running, it might be in a different folder. I'll show you what the path would be for a Windows application. Here's the path for a Windows application. As you can see, it's going to be on your C drive users, whatever your Windows username is on your account profile, basically, in the app data roaming Microsoft user secrets, and then user secrets ID. You'll know what your user secrets ID is here in a moment, as that's going to be part of this tutorial when you first create your user secrets. And that user ID will also then be placed in your project after you create the first user secret by initializing your user secrets. All right. So before we replace the secrets, uh, before we replace the app settings JSON setting with the user secret setting, I'd like to show you the difference between the two. So we're going to very, very quickly add something to the app settings.json and pull it into the application, and then we'll swap it out for a user secret. That'll also show me something that I recently learned, how to notate your app settings.json that there's something there that should be in the user secrets. Because imagine you pull a project from source control and you're like, well, I don't know what secrets I need to set because I just pulled it from a Git repository and there's no notation of those secrets. Well, the cool thing you can do is to always have everything in AppSettings.json except that the secrets will just be kind of notated here that, hey, you got to go create these secrets. So let's begin. First thing you'll do in your AppSettings.json is you'll set up that section where you have the items that may be later moved. So what you could do is you could say, let's just call this our authentication. I don't know, you might call it your SQL Server uh, section, or you might call it your integration section. Just depends on the type of information that you want. Put a colon, and then we'll have open and close curly braces to put all the settings within that. So if, for instance, you wanted to have a username that was visible in app settings.json, but a password that was hidden, which, by the way, that best practices is you'd probably want to hide both the username and password, but um, you could do it this way. You could put username my user and then password and here's where it gets interesting here you could put just a reminder remember i was saying how you could flag them you could say move to user secrets and you could put that on every section that you wanted to move there so if you want to move username and password then you could do like that and let's say you also had some other settings in here that you wanted to continue getting through app settings.json, you could do, um, uh, let's call it, just call it uh, server. And maybe we can have an IP address. And maybe you have something else like um, maybe color. I'm not really sure what to put there, <laughs> but because you know every application has different settings that are specific to the application. So we'll call it color brown, an IP address, and move to user secrets. Sounds good. So next thing we need to do is we need to create a user secrets. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a class with these names. So what I like to do is do add new folder. And I'm going to call this folder options. Because you might have, so this, this options group is called authentication. You might have another options group called uh, tree properties. I mean, there's diff depending, different applications have different needs, of course. So in here, we're going to add a class. And we're going to call it authentication. I copied and pasted it from app settings there. And we've got username, password, server, and color. And these are going to be properties. So we'll do public and then string. And then you're going to want your get and set just like that. If you hover over this, it's going to tell you that non-nullable uh, must contain a value, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't really apply here as long as you keep a value in your app settings.json. But if you wanted to, you could do string.empty, and that will get rid of that warning. Let me copy and paste that. 
and we'll do our other one that we wanted that was not in user secrets, which was power. Looks good to me. Now we're going to make some changes to the program.cs to load in these values. And immediately after we're done with that, we will manage the two that are user secrets since I wanted to show you both. Okay. Go to your program.cs. Should be at the same level as your solution. And at the top, you're going to add these two using statements. Microsoft.extensions.dependency injections and Microsoft.extensions.options. Next, somewhere between defining your builder from create builder and the builder.build, somewhere in between these two, I like to do it right before adding the controllers. You will go ahead and configure that class. So remember, we put under options authentication.cs. So we're going to configure authentication here, and you're going to have to do a control dot on that to bring in that namespace. So in my case, my namespace on authentication.cs was user secret examples so, uh, dot options because it's in the options folder. Yours might be a little different. So bring that in. And um, the exact same name is going to be over here under get section. So we have builder.configuration.get section authentication. And if I go over to app settings.json, that will make sense because authentication is this block here. Great. So now this is available to be injected using dependency injection. Next, navigate to your controller or service that you want to inject this into, the place that you want to use the values that are in your app settings.json. We will do the same thing for the user secrets immediately after. In this case, this is just the typical web API for .NET 7. It's going to be very similar for .NET 6 and uh, .NET 8, but we'll just jump in here. So in your controller, um, or your service, whatever it is. You should already have a constructor. If you don't, go ahead and create one. I've just got one here to bring in the logger. Just like how the logger is done here in the boilerplate using dependency injection, we're also going to bring in the extensions this way from app settings.json. So I'm going to do private, read only, and then we're going to do the name of our options class, which is authentication. Uh, and then we'll call it authentication. And I like to use the underscore just how, just how it is above with the logger to identify the local value there. Great. You can do control dot on that. You're going to accept that user namespace. If you don't see it, I'm sure you can figure it out. It's going to be the namespace that's used inside your options class. In my case, authentication, user secret example, which is the name of my solution dot options. Now we're going to add another parameter to the constructor, and it's going to be iOptions, which is from, if you hover over it, Microsoft.Extensions.Options. And you're going to have these triangular brackets, triangular, I'm not sure what they're called, these symbols here, <laughs> um, where you can specify the type of options is going to be of type authentication, which is your class that you've already brought in above. And here you can give it a name like I'm going to call this authentication options, but I like to keep it kind of simple and always have the name match the name of the private value without the underscore in front of it. That way you're very consistent in your constructor. You always know what to expect that the local is being assigned to the parameter, uh, except it should be lowercase. That's best practices here. Uppercase if it was a property, lowercase is great for a parameter. Oh, and with these options, it's always going to be dot value, just like that. Now, um, if I put a breakpoint here and I go ahead and run the application, I should take just a moment. This computer is fairly fast these days. I can now, now that I'm in this controller, this get controller action, I can hover over underscore authentication and look at the values within. As you can see, the color brown and the IP address 123 dot et cetera for server is accessible. Perfect. Now let's look at how the ones that we move from app settings.json to 
user secrets. Let's look at how that's done. If you already have developer PowerShell at least once in the bottom of your screen, go ahead and click it. If not, go to the top, click on View, and in that drop down menu, you are going to select Terminal. The terminal should open up PowerShell. If it does not, there's a little drop down box there, and you can pick from the different type of shells available to you and select Developer PowerShell. Next up, you are going to make sure. Well, that's the command we're going to run, but you are going to make sure you are in the folder you want to be in. Uh, PWD works. Uh, and also, you should be able to see a path depending on where you're at. Um, obviously, if you're on a Mac, it's not going to be PowerShell. It's going to be some other terminal, but the command should still work, I believe. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm kind of a PC guy myself. So I am in DataVids Repos User Secrets 2, User Secrets Example. Uh, which is the folder where my solution file is. But I'm going to actually go one more level into the project level, the user secret example. As you can see on the top of my screen, that is, as you can see on the top of my screen, that is a project file there, user secret example. We want to go into the project level. So now I'm in the project level. I'm going to run .NET user dash secrets space in it. I was trying to zoom in. It won't let me down here, uh, but I can zoom in this piece here. Anyways, um, this is a project file before I run it. Let's go ahead and run in it here in our in this project where we want to apply this. And boom, as you can see, it automatically generated the user secrets ID there, which is a unique GUID to represent the user secrets for this computer, for this project. Um, and now we can start adding the user secrets. One thing to note is that these are going to be key value pairs. So just like how in your app settings.json, you've got your little group and then you've got your value in it. The combination of the group that it's in, or I'm sorry, the section that it's in, authentication with say password, would the combination of those two is going to be the key and the value is going to be what you assign to it. So we're going to add another command here, down here in the terminal at the bottom, which in my case is developer PowerShell. And I'm going to do .NET space user dash secrets space set. Now we're going to do double quotes. And inside those double quotes, we are going to do authentication colon the username. Then you're going to do a space another set of double quotes, and in here you're going to place the value. So let's call it my secret username and press enter. As you can see, it's a little small here and I can't zoom in, so I'll just read it to you. Successfully saved authentication colon username equal to my secret username to the secret store. So we can go to that folder that I showed you earlier on this computer and open up secrets.json and you should see something of interest there. So as you can see, I am in uh, C drive users, a uh, user account name. That's your Windows user account, app data, roaming, Microsoft user secrets. And then there's a whole bunch of files here. Interesting, isn't it? So let's go to the one that matches the ID from your project file. If you're in .NET Core, you should, or .NET anything after, like .NET 5, 6, 7, 8, you should be able to just click, left click once on your project name, which will open up the CSPROJ file. You can look at the user secrets ID and match it to one of these folders here. So I'm looking for B0BD6. Probably just sort by date modified would make the most sense. And there it is. Double click to open and voila, there's a user secrets.json. Do not commit this to source control or anything. That's why it's way out here, totally in a different folder than your project. But if you wanted to see where it was, you could open it from there. And let, we're going to open it with Visual Studio Code just to take a quick peek. And once again, it is not encrypted or anything, but it's not going into source control and it's specific to your computer. And you can manage the folder permissions you know, to make it a bit more secure. And 
there you have it. Your key value pair is available there and you can directly modify it with an editor if you wanted to. It, it's I prefer to just edit it with the command line. Kind of, that's what it's there for, right? Um, so let's add the password as well and then I will show you in the application how to get the values out and use them in your program because I'm sure that's exactly what you're going to do next, right? So I hit the up arrow so I don't have to retype everything and it brought the command up again down here in my terminal at the bottom. I'm just going to remove username but keep authentication and I'm going to add password here and I'm going to remove my secret username and I'm going to put my big secret password right there okay and press enter it's been added to the secret store so if I was to go back into VS code it would just be the next line there just as you expected it and of course that file did a lot look a lot like app settings.json but it only had the uh, key value pair that we were looking for go to your authentication class we're going to add username and password here don't worry, it is not going to pull in the move to user secrets because now that your application has the user secrets ID in the project file here, it's going to try to get it from user secrets before using the app settings.json. The cool thing about having it here though is that it'll get that value if there isn't a value for it in the app uh, user secrets. And then when it throws the error, it's going to say, Move to user secrets is not a valid username, right? Which will clue you in that you need to look at user secrets. So if you just pulled down this repo and you knew nothing about it, that would be a good clue for you. All right, let's go ahead and add them real here, really quickly here. I'm just going to copy and paste the color one twice and type username. And of course, make sure this matches exactly to how you created the secret and password. Now we'll go ahead and run it. We're going to hit that same breakpoint. You're going to love this. It's going to combine the two settings from appsettings.json, the server and color, with the username and password in the same class. So if I hover over my underscore authentication and expand that out, you'll see um, color brown, password, my big secret password from your uh, secrets.json, and then server name from your app settings.json and then uh, username from your secrets.json. So you've got combined everything that you need, but separated to ensure that you're not putting secrets into source control. One more thing I'd like to warn you that another colleague of mine taught me about a few years ago is that whenever you commit secrets to GitHub or to any other source control that if you go ahead and remove them later and then make a commit, all they have to do is look at the history, the Git history or the subversion history or whatever type of source control it is. They can look at the history on your app settings.json and see that you used to have a password there and now they know what the password is. So if you don't want user secrets to be in your source control, you need to do what the slang term is called nuke the branch. I'm sorry, nuke the repository. But what it really means is delete the repository recreate it that way you're starting your branch history from scratch on that branch on that whole repository even and then there will not be any secrets in there and then you go forward from there without ever committing a secret and you'll know that all your branch history is safe so now we've done it you've got in your app settings of json your secrets of json you've got everything figured out and you should be able to manage your properties as needed have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching DataVids. See you next time.